Uh, before I start, I'd like to thank TTC and Federation of Hong Kong Business Associations Worldwide for inviting me today to this luncheon dialogue to speak on the subject of speaking of tomorrow, alongside two of my good friends, Paulo and Brian. I hope to use the next few minutes to give you a brief, brief background of Chevali Group and then lead to the vision I have for the group and how we are positioning ourselves for tomorrow, using Hong Kong as our base and foundation. Chevali was first founded by my father in 1970 in Hong Kong and started as an agent for Toshiba Elevators. Under his chairmanship for the last 43 years and still counting, the group has always maintained a very entrepreneurial culture and a great interest and readiness to explore new business lines. Hence, until today, the group has become quite diversified and spread across many countries around the world. However, despite efforts to diversify today, I'd say the group's main contributor of revenue and profits are mainly from the construction and engineering businesses as well as the property and property related businesses under the group, with Hong Kong and China being the biggest geographical source of our profitability. So we have always been asked, what is the strategy behind our diversification? Why do you go into this venture? Why did you go into that business line? I suppose I could attribute that to the benefit of being based in Hong Kong, because since Hong Kong is so well connected to the world and being a financial hub, inevitably, many business opportunities do flow through our door. Just to give an example, investment opportunities very often get passed around by financial intermediaries from accounting firms, law firms, and even trade commission offices. And Hong Kong does have one of the widest representations in this regard. So behind what seemingly might be a might seemingly be diversification without a direction uh, in Chevale, or core investment in business lines actually do follow a macro theme, which is to tap the long-term opportunities across the border on the mainland. No doubt everyone would agree that China is where the opportunities lie in the coming decades. Since about 15 years ago, our group ventured into the residential property development business on the mainland with the first project in Shanghai. The thesis was quite simple. With the government's plan to increase urbanization in the country, coupled with increased household income, demand for homes was bound to increase steadily in the cities. After about a decade, the only difference is that our focus has shifted to second tier and third tier cities, with current projects in Chengdu and Changchun. The property development business the property development market in China is certainly very enormous, and the biggest developers in China today are turning over hundreds of billions of renminbi per annum. So given the vast potential, why aren't we investing more heavily in that business, given, given all our reasonable track record to date? But I'd say the reason is that our group does want to maintain a very diversified profile, or in other words, not to put all our eggs in one basket. And because of our first-hand experience on the ground developing properties on the mainland, we know the business is not without its challenges. So we decided to deploy our available capital outside of what we've already invested in the China property business into new directions that would create long-term potential for the group. Two of the main challenges that China will face in the coming decades include the problem of aging population and also as well as food security. First on the topic of aging population, approximately a quarter of Shanghai's population today is over 60 years old. By 2020, China will have approximately 167 million people over 65 years old. The Chinese government wants to drive domestic consumption, and the main coastal cities want to expand their services sector. So in our view, the long-term demand for senior care services is certainly very clear to us. However, China does not have an established senior care or senior housing business sector. There are a few experienced overseas operators that have recently set up operations in Shanghai and Beijing, but the list is short, and it's just the beginning. So about three years ago, Chevalier identified China Senior Care as a long-term business prospect for the group. And to acquire the expertise, which we didn't have inside the group at that time, we decided that we wanted to learn from the established markets, such as, for example, the US, and to build our network and connection with good operators in the business. So since then, we have made acquisitions in North Carolina and Oregon. In addition to Yes Links, we've also established contacts with us, experienced Australian operators in the industry that have interest to venture in China. And we're well placed in Hong Kong because they would like to work with partners such, a, such, such as us sitting next to Hong China and with the experience in the industry. And on the second point about food security, China is also faced with tremendous challenge in supplying reliable quality food to its growing population. And to add to the problem is the issue with water source and soil contamination, farming malpractices, lack of reliable cold chain logistics, and even sometimes food scandals. What China needs is partner countries that would 
that could export reliable food to China. But more importantly, in the long run, is for China to import best practices, know-how, technology, and management in this sector, in the agriculture sector. And as soon as Shivali identified this as another area of long-term prospect for the group, we embarked on the search for appropriate ways to acquire such expertise to allow us to enter the China market in the long run. Australia, this is where Australia came in. Australia having a clean and green image for agribusiness and for the fact that it's easy to deal with Australian companies with English being the language used there and a common law legal system and management and governance, pack, governance best practices that is familiar and compatible to Hong Kong, it made sense for us to seek out acquisition target from that market. And so earlier this year, Chevalier Group acquired a leading fresh produce supply chain and uh, growing company based in Australia. And the objective was in the short term to export some produce to the region, and in the long run was to export the know-how to China and other parts of Asia, which would bring a new dimension to the business, which was the domestic business when we acquired it, and would turn it into a regional company. So this, uh, this objective, this strategy was very appealing to the management uh, that we acquired, as well as the reinvesting shareholders, as well as our partner banks. And this is why we have started in this business line. In summary, nowadays it's not easy to find a large market where you can still expect a fast demand growth for a product or service that you can offer. This is why the China market is such highly sought after by many companies. Instead of waiting for overseas companies to come to us in Hong Kong to look for a partner to help break in the China market, we decided that we would identify business strategies that has potential across the border, but China, worse, China still lacks the know-how and expertise. By going abroad to acquire these companies, we'll be equipped to create our own destiny and to start building a truly diversified portfolio of businesses in the long term. Thank you.